15 rounds of intense action packed into 94 minutes. Get your energy drinks, get your lube, because there ain't no rest for the wicked. This is main evented by Cole and Green with some tag teams and some whims action. There ain't nothing in the world for free. We can't slow down. We can't stop now, even though we wish we could. 15 rounds of action with men sporting wood. No, I don't know what I'm on about, but let's get on with it. I'm John Rentham with my review of AEW Dark, and yes, 94 minutes of action, 15 matches. Okay, I really fucking get that they're trying to get as many people as possible on this show, but seriously, while some of the matches are good, some of the matches were beneficial. 15 matches, just squash matches and all this, it's too goddamn much in one program. At least it wasn't two hours, though. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. Back in Universal Studios, Excalibur and Taz on commentary. At least they were having fun. And we start off with Sean Spears and Wardlow against Bear Country. Okay, a bit unusual since I thought that they were going to feature Bear Country maybe beating some enhancement talents and, you know, building up stuff and then putting over a team like Spears and Wardlow, but they decided to do this. I think this show was recorded about a month ago, though, so, you know, the timeline's a little bit off, but it was interesting. I mean, uh, giving his finger over to Bear Country was a line from commentary. I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did. Uh, there was a big man battle, and Wardlow actually got slammed, kicked out at one, but still, that's something impressive. Uh, there was a toe pay by Bronson, and then a hot tag to Boulder, and later, uh, the casualty of war when uh, Bear Country tried to do the splash off the shoulders. That was pretty impressive, because I was wondering how the hell Wardlow was going to do that, even though I know Wardlow's stout. I'm like, how are they going to do it? Oh, okay, that's how they'll do it. Anyway, so Spears and Wardlow get the win. At least the more interesting member of the team got the pin. Kylan King took on Renee Michelle. I like Kylan King. I think Kylan King's going to have a big 2022. Renee Michelle uh, showed some good heel work, and Kylan King won with Kingdom's Fall, or Kingdom Falls, rather, in uh, about, I don't know, two minutes. It wasn't bad. At least they featured the women, you know, they featured uh, multiple women's matches, and didn't just human sent to beat them together in one eight-woman tag like they did for Dark Elevation. Marvez interviews Del Sol about Ethan. Well, he kept, he kept throwing out a bunch of cliches, and he did what he did. And he is fired up and is going to beat Ethan Page. Santana Ortiz took on Brandon Gore. That is a terrific slasher villain name. That just is. I mean, nothing against the guy. I just think that's terrific. Gus and Gus De La Vega. Vega. Um, well, it was basically a showcase for Santana Ortiz. They outlined in chalk. One, two, three. Wasn't bad. It was just there. Sky Blue took on La Rosa Negra who was the woman that Tessa Blanchard spat on a number of years ago and got in hot water about and everything, So because Tessa Blanchard decided to have women support other women, and then that shit came out. And Tessa Blanchard basically has to be part of the WoW reboot that is not even going to be a thing for another year, while La Rosa is at least getting a shot in AEW. That's got to be eating her up. Her dad, that is one of the most notorious, like, you know, dicks in wrestling, even though he was a great pro, is there at this stage of his career, and Tessa can't even get a goddamn call because she's a dumb bitch. Sky Blue, though, I like Sky Blue. I think Sky Blue's got energy. La Rosa had, you know, some good uh, good strikes and can be a pretty good heel. I'm not really that familiar with her outside of the whole Tessa situation, seeing her here, but I've heard good things. And a belly to belly, and, well, I don't even really know what you call it. It's like, a, it's like you know, some kind of rolling flatliner, one, two, three. Good stuff by Sky Blue. Hopefully she gets some more opportunities. Bring back La Rosa for more uh, dark tapings, please. Just to rub it in Tessa Blanchard's face because she's a stupid bitch. So anyway, Five versus Mike Reed. Saw Five, uh, Alan Five Angels at a recent Without a Cause show just a couple days ago. Went to a 30-minute time limit with the ch uh, current champion of the promotion. Good stuff. And Angels definitely can work. This wasn't bad. Um, he did get the wing snapper in about 90 seconds and got the victory. And then Rio Mizunami took on the mean girl, the, you know, <clears throat> the real mean girl, Danny Jordan. And I'd be wearing her shirt, except it's in the wash right now. But I like Danny Jordan. And I like that, you know, she was using the burn book stuff and hitting her, you know, hitting her with it and everything. It's like, huh, I like the book's going to read you. And Danny Jordan did some good heel work, but Rio kind of glommed her and then hit some kind of weird slam. I don't really know what to call it. One, two, three. So there you go. But the book action, good stuff. Always remember to read, kids. The Butcher took on uh, Michael Martinez. It was a glom and a repeated pounding, and the Butcher won. What happened to it? They seem to not be teaming up the Butcher and the Blade and Private Party anymore. What happened? What happened to these teams? 
I know Blade's dealing with some mental health issues, and I hope he's going to be all right. But he's been on recently. I, I don't know. Good, good on the butcher. And I actually, I people keep telling me I should check out the music that his band does, and I haven't. Uh, it, send me a song in the comments if you guys are familiar with it, and I'll listen. Um, but yeah, butcher won pretty convincingly. J U L A A, J U L A A, Hart took on Nikita Knight, who I believe took on Thunder Rosa in her AEW debut a month or so ago. Um, Julia has energy, and Nikita had some good heel work. This wasn't bad. There was a nice, uh, you know, just a, almost a screwdriver variation by Knight. That was beautifully done. But then J U L A A, J U L A A, Hart. Hit the um, split leg bulldog soon after one, two, three. Not bad. And again, at least they're giving the women some time. And then Ray Jazz took on Infinito. That's Cody under, you know, in a bodysuit, isn't it? In a mask. That's Cody. It's got to be Cody. I don't know who the hell else that would be. Considering they got music, I'm not, I, I would think it would have to be. An airplane spin, Infinity airplane spin, and eventually he got the victory. Ray did get in a few strikes, but it was what it was. If it's not Cody, I'd love to know who it is. But I think it's Cody. And legit Layla Hirsch taking on uh, Sahara 7. This was quick. I think it was a minute in the cross arm breaker for the victory. Sahara really didn't get to do much. She, uh, the opportunity just kind of dried up in front of her. In all seriousness, maybe she'll get featured and she can get in a few more shots at a later date. The Varsity Blondes, which A-U-L-A-A, I just can't help but say that. Every time I've heard the crowd say it, it just pops into my head. So, uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison, with a, that's so much hair, so much hair on that team, taking on Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo. It was fine. Uh, at one point, Solo irritated Julia Hart, and she's like, I'm tired of being picked on. Smack. And Camarado hit a nice spear. Griff showed some good fire, and they eventually got, it was like a sunset flip after a discus form. One, two, three. Not a bad match. Was what it was. It served its purpose. Camarado and Solo got more time, and Varsity Blondes got a win. Giovanni interviews him and talks about maybe tag goals in your future. He's like, damn right, tag goals in our future, says Griff Garrison. And Pillman talks about, well, you talk about being the future, and we're the now of professional wrestling. And good on Pillman Jr. for um, improving and doing good and everything and carrying on, you know, from the dark side of the ring momentum that he had, even though it's really sad to think that momentum could come out of that given the tragedy of what happened with his dad. And the fact that his, uh, you know, Mother Metheny, I really, really, really goddamn hope she's having a miserable goddamn holiday, that piece of shit. But Pillman Jr. I like Pillman Jr. And I like Griff. I think Griff has improved quite a bit. Uh, Tony Nice took on uh, Demarcio James. And Demarcio James did hit a nice drop kick, got in a few other strikes, but Nice kind of glommed him, hit the running Nice, and there you go. Matt Hardy and George Ole took on Baron Black and Prince Agbala. I'm sorry if I mispronounce that. I really am. I like Baron Black. I'm impressed with some of the stuff he's done. Uh, various, you know, uh, appearances on Dark Dark Elevation, especially during the pandemic. You know, the earlier days of the pandemic. George Ole has a good look. Matt Hardy. I stated my opinions on Matt Hardy. I don't really think he should be in the ring in 2021. It was fine. Uh, this Prince guy has a pretty good look and eventually took the pin after Jorah had basically done all the work. After coming back, Matt got the glory, morning glory, and got the twist hummingbird. Actually, got the twist of fate. And then we get um, we get Ethan Page versus uh, Fuego Del Sol. Was the match fine? Sure. Was Del Sol hitting some cool dives and everything? Sure. Ethan was trying to be a heel, and I just, I just don't buy it with Ethan Page. I'm not saying anything wrong with him. I just don't buy it. He eventually hits the Eagle's Edge. One, two, three. Not a bad match. Just there. Cole versus Anthony Green, and Adam Cole, baby, forever, because seriously, he kept doing that forever, forever, and a day that's never. Uh, there were a lot of Sonny Bono jokes directed at Anthony Green, and he did do a nice comeback after Cole had uh, beat him down, did get some nice near falls, did hit a crucifix bomb and a single leg crab that Cole fought out of, hit uh, lowering the boom, all about that boom, to the back of the head, one, two, three, and that's it. That is summarizing 94 minutes and just under 10 I'm going to see how things go uh, with the Dark Elevation and Dark Reviews. If the interest just isn't there, I might drop them at the beginning of the year. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.